How's it going everyone? And in this video, we're going to be walking through how to use Jenkins. And specifically what we're going to be doing is walking through creating a Jenkins pipeline that is able to look to a GitHub repository, pull whatever is there, build that code or run that code, specifically a Python file that we'll have written. And then in addition to that, we're going to be walking through how to actually make or run tests on this code. So if you had a bunch of developers who are pushing to a GitHub repo, you would be able to have this Jenkins uh, platform building and testing these things to help you have a CI CD pipeline. So this would be involved with that CI part of making sure that you're actually pushing commits that can pass unit tests if you've written those for example. So we'll get started. And I'm running a Windows machine, but I'm going to be using Docker to basically make this operating system agnostic. So as long as you have Docker installed, that's all that matters to get started and to use this. So I have a PowerShell open right now in my Windows, but if you're on Mac, you would just open up a terminal. And the first thing you do, just to confirm you've got Docker, is run the Docker command just like that. I'm going to clear this page just so it's a bit cleaner. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this command uh, that basically is going to tell Docker to run the Jenkins image and create a container of that. So it's gonna bind some ports, port 8080 and port 50,000. And even though you haven't downloaded anything, as soon as you hit enter, the uh, Docker program on your computer is gonna realize this and it's gonna start downloading all the stuff that it needs to. So it makes this whole process super simple. You don't have to worry about finding the Docker website and going to download or, or uh, you know Jenkins or anything like that. So basically pulling the latest version of Jenkins uh, Docker image off of Docker Hub. And this is the easiest, fastest way to get started. So I'm just gonna shut up and let this thing download. And uh, once we do that, we'll get back to the action. Okay, and I just wanna make a quick note that Jenkins uh, in the PowerShell terminal does tell us this password that it creates for us. So that is something that's very important that we need to remember uh, later down the road because once this whole thing finishes, Jenkins can be running on a server. So we do need to remember uh, that specific password. So get a copy of that, put it on a notepad or a text thing. And uh, now that we've done that, we're gonna let this thing just keep wrapping up. And you will know that this process is finished when you open up a new browser window. So I've got this right here. If you type in localhost and then colon 8080, you'll see if you're getting a response from it, which we are. And so we're getting this unlock Jenkins message. So uh, very simply, we're just going to grab this password, copy it, paste it in there, click continue. I like to save this because I have a hard time remembering stuff. Um, and then it's also gonna ask you if you want to install any suggested plugins, just why not, you know? And we're gonna let this thing go through with the process of install. So I'm just gonna be quiet for another little bit and let this thing keep on chugging away. All right, and so now that it's just finished installing all those plugins, I'm going to not create an admin user, although if, if this was a production environment, you would, uh, and you would obviously remember those credentials. I'm just going to click on this skip and continue as admin button, and we're just gonna say we're gonna keep it currently as is on our local host as port 8080. If this was something that you were gonna have multiple developers contributing to, then at this point, you might wanna have a different or better URL, um, but I'm just gonna click on save and finish for now, and we're going to click on start using Jenkins. And now that we've done that, uh, I'm going to make this a full screen. And what we are going to do is click on a new item. And we've got a pipeline right here. And we're gonna wanna choose that. And I'm gonna go with a Python build and test demo. And we'll call it that. And I'm gonna click on okay. And it's gonna be creating that and you can put in a little description here. So uh, this package runs a Python script and tests it using PyTest. And you don't have to, but good practice. Uh, I'm gonna not check any of these things here because we're just going to let this thing uh, run its course. In terms of the pipeline uh, part, so we're going to be writing a script that actually tells us, or that basically defines how your pipeline should look. Um, so in our case, um, there's this little thing here, try sample pipeline. If you 
uh, go down here and you choose like hello world it gives you this little test thing so you don't have to remember all the little curly braces at least to get started so um, that's what we're going to do and then while that's going um, i'm also going to pull up a uh, github repo right here and this is a public repo that anyone can download and use uh, and so basically in here i i just wrote a couple of python functions that are meant to do really basic math operations and then in addition to that there is this test ops.py file that is confirming that my python functions work as we expect them to so as a developer adds like a new function and a new unit test we want to make sure that we're testing those things inside of our uh, jenkins platform or uh, pipeline so uh, this is stuff where you would actually modify your source code um, but this is the code itself and um, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go back so this is the root of my repo and we're going to uh, just save this right now keep it in a separate tab uh, and basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be defining stages that go into our pipeline so a stage consists of multiple steps and multiple stages make up the entire pipeline so uh, i'm not going to change anything having to do with uh, line two and what we're going to do is we're going to basically call the first stage of our pipeline the checkout stage and uh, then what we're going to do, because remembering all the syntax can be a bit challenging sometimes, if you click on this pipe, pipeline syntax link, uh, it'll open up a new tab and you can have it pre-populate things or give you a nice little uh, you know, uh, template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the checkout and I'm going to hit enter. And we're basically saying that we're going to be pulling from Git and it asks for this repository URL. So I'm going to go back to this tab. I'm going to click on the green code button and I'm going to click on this copy thing right here and I'm going to paste that guy in there and you're going to note that because this is a public github repo anyone can access it I haven't needed to supply any kinds of credentials to this if this was a private github repo then we would need to uh, go into here and add our own personal github credentials to that so I'm going to just for this example pull from a public repository and build it and Jenkins and test it um, so just like that that's all we need to do here and then if you scroll all the way to the bottom and click on generate pipeline script it gives you this nice little uh, snippet that you have so I'm going to copy that bad boy we're going to go back to our first tab and so in our checkout stage under steps I'm going to replace line 7 with that snippet and so now um, what's going to happen is inside of our pipeline it's going to go through the process of grabbing whatever repo is present hosted by github at that particular url that we just gave it so um, that's pretty cool and then what we can do is we're going to click on save and what you can also do is click on build now and it's going to say build schedule so just click it one time and it's going to give you a pretty cool little uh, status thing and it's telling us that it, it failed to uh, build and so we can dive through the logs a little bit here to see what i did wrong and in my case um, the issue is that it's looking for a branch called master but if you look at this the branch is actually called main and so what i have to do is i have to uh, close out of this window then we're going to go to the configure part and then we're going to uh, scroll down to where we're defining our pipeline script and then in a, uh, what we're going to do there is we're basically going to change this line to say main and we're going to click on save again and then we're going to try building our pipeline and it's going to schedule another build we'll give it a second and hopefully this succeeds so awesome and, and this is how i like to make pipelines like do it one stage at a time just that so you don't you know do like five stages and then it blows up and you don't know where it blew up uh, it just makes it a lot cleaner and easier in my opinion um, so that's great so now we are running a docker container that's running uh, Jenkins on our local computer on port 8080 because we did that port binding in that first step and we were able to from Jenkins grab that public repository off of github and so then uh, the next step here is we actually want to build this source code that we just downloaded so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this configure page scroll back down here and then I'm going to basically copy uh, lines 9 through 5 and I'll try to make this bigger because my vision is not the greatest uh, and we're going to paste that guy right in there. We're going to make sure the index are looking good. Um, and then I'm going to create another stage. And this stage, we're going to call it build. Or we can call it run or whatever. But, you know, I'm going to call it build. Um, and 
Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to again go back to that pipeline syntax tab and uh, what I want to do here is I want to look up how we can run shell commands uh, or a shell script and basically what we want to do is we want to call Python and tell so inside of the Jenkins docker container it's literally like a little mini computer we want Python to run that source code that we just gave it so the command would be python3 and then the name of my file that I want to try running is ops.py so ops.py just like that um, and I'm going to click on generate script and it's going to tell us that that is the line that would go into our pipeline script so I'm going to go back to this first tab and under the steps here all we have to do is delete this guy paste it in just like that and I will provide a copy of this pipeline script so that any of you guys can download this and use it and play around with it. Uh, but once we've done that, we're going to click on save and we're going to run another build. And I'm going to scroll out here just so we can see a little bit more about what's going on. And so we're able to check out successfully, but during our build stage, we are not doing so hot. So um, again, just click on these logs and see what is the issue here. So it's telling us that Python 3 was not found. So inside of that Docker container, it's an entirely separate environment from like our host machine right now. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that Python 3 exists there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up PowerShell and I'm specifically going to open up a new window because I don't want to, uh, to have like a different session and we're going to try to make this big so we can see it. Um, and then I'm going to make this half screen and we'll do Jenkins as the other half. Um, and so what I want to do is I'll run the command Docker PS and so basically what this command does is it tells me any Docker containers that are currently running on my computer. And if I make this guy bigger, um, it's telling us under this first column, what is my container ID? So what I want to do is I want to connect to that container ID. I want to, I want to get inside of it and add in Python because I don't currently have Python to run my program. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to run the command and this is a a bit bigger one, but um, bear with me. So basically it's uh, docker exec and then dash it to open it up in an interactive terminal and then dash u zero. So what that command does is it tells you to run this as a root user or as the root user inside of that. And then we're going to paste in that container ID. And then we're also going to run the command slash bin or slash bash. So just like that, we now have root access to our Docker container that's running Jenkins right now. Next step is we're going to be running the command Python. You're gonna see it doesn't say it's found. Try Python 3, it's also not found. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say apt get and then update. And so basically what this do it does is it's telling the package manager of the operating system that is inside of that Docker container to update all the packages that it has inside of it. And then once we've done that, we're going to be running the command apt-get install python3. And so now it's able to locate that uh, Python uh, package and it's going to download it for us. So I'm just going to do that and it's pretty quick, which is awesome. And then the way you can confirm that it actually uh, is there is inside of this container, you just run the command Python 3, and you can see that it's now inside of this. So we can just run like a little print hello world command and get that back out. And when you want to exit out of that, you just type in exit with those parentheses and you're back to your root uh, just like that. So now that I've installed Python 3 inside of our actual uh, Docker container, if we go back to here, we're gonna remember that we failed it because I couldn't find Python 3. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on build now. So we're gonna schedule another build. And I'm gonna make this guy full screen. And uh, you can see that it was now able to successfully build, which is great. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again modify this Python, or uh, sorry, pipeline script. And we're going to create yet another uh, file inside of here. And what I wanna do is actually run the uh, PyTest part of this. So uh, what we're going to do uh, for that is we're going to uh, perform the following. So uh, another thing I want to do is inside of uh, the build stage, I need to again get 
the, uh, the run the git command to basically grab that branch again for the source code that I want to be testing. So I'm going to go back to this pipeline syntax thing and look up the git command. And we're going to, again, uh, give it that uh, repo URL. And the branch name was called main. And we don't need to supply any credentials because it's a public repo. We're going to generate this script. We're going to copy this guy. And I'm going to go here. And we're basically ensuring that we've got our source code inside of it uh, as we expect. So that's great. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this again. And I'm going to uh, create another stage in our pipeline and make sure that our indents are good. And this is going to be called our test stage. And inside of our test stage, what we want to do is basically run the shell command uh, like as follows. So we're going to be running uh, Python 3 and then dash m pytest. So as soon as you download this source code from that GitHub repo inside of the project directory, if you run this command, pytest is going to locate this file called testops.py and run it for you. So if someone just messed up your add function, your add, your test add function should catch that and realize that, you know, when it's assuming that two and three should give you five as a result, if it sees anything other than five, you'll fail this test. Um, so I'm going to copy, uh, I'm going to go back to this guy and we're going to now try running our build stage. I'm going to save this and we're going to schedule another manual build. So give this guy a second. You can see now that it now has three stages in our pipelines. That's pretty cool. And we're going to see that it failed. So we're going to see why did it fail. And it's telling us that we have no module named PyTest present in our actual uh, Docker container for Jenkins. So uh, again, what we're going to have to do is we're going to go back to PowerShell. And uh, I'm already, I'm still in that session where I was signed in as that root user. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the command. Sorry, give me one second. apt get install python3-pip. I'm going to run this command and uh, let this guy, it's going to say, do I want to continue? I have to say yes. And just give it a second. Okay, so we've just finished installing the pip. Uh, or Python 3 pip package into our Docker container with Jenkins on it. So now we've got Python and we've got pip, which is awesome. So uh, now what I'm going to do is again from the root interactive terminal, I'm going to run the command pip and then we want to install the pytest package. And if you had a, uh, oops, I need to run the command pip install pytest. So this is going to tell the Python package manager inside of our Docker container to install PyTest. And so now that we've installed PyTest and Python, we should be able to run our Python and also run that PyTest uh, in order to have unit tests on our source code. So now when I go back to this and we close this guy out and we do another build, it's gonna schedule another guy and it's going to hopefully make it all the way through our test stage as well. So, and it does, which is perfect. So we're gonna to go to here to click on logs and you're gonna see how it's telling us this output. So in uh, PyTest, if you see a, a little dot, that is, uh, if it's green, that means that it did pass. So it's basically telling us that uh, whatever that commit was to our public repo, uh, that latest commit is passing all of our unit tests the way we expect it to, which is fantastic. Um, and all of that is being done in Jenkins through this Docker container that we spun up on our local machine, whether or not this is a Windows or Mac or whatever. And if you wanted to get more production environment like, you could do stuff like the Elastic Container Service in AWS and host your Docker container there that's having Jenkins and these other packages uh, present as well too. So um, just like that, we're up and off the ground. You can get even fancier uh, with your Docker container and probably save yourself some clicks uh, in terms of you know us having to manually install Python 3 and Python 3 pip. Uh, you can create a custom Docker image uh, based off of the latest image for Jenkins, um, but that's stuff that you guys can get deeper into. So um, just like that, we are off the ground and running, and I hope this stuff is helpful. It took me a while to figure this all out, but um, yeah, thank you all, and let me know if you have any questions, and be well.